been some pretty big changes on the CTA client, mainly consisting of balanced tweaks to air and land vehicles and infantry lock-on weapons. To give you guys a quick summary of what I'm going to cover in this video, I'll demonstrate the new below radar feature for all air vehicles, which has been highly requested since release of the game, so I'm pretty happy to see Darcelaya bringing it back over. There's been a huge buff to the infantry lock-on weapons, so the Stinger and Igla, and finally, there's been a nerf once again to the straw in terms of its damage output. However, it's not all that bad. It did get some buffs to its turning capability and things in that nature, but I'll go over that in more details later in the video. So as for Below Radar, what's it all about? What does it mean for air pilots out there? Well, basically you have a new passive ability. If you flow low enough to the ground, you'll be immune to certain kinds of anti-air weapons locking onto you. If you're in a helicopter, you need to fly below 25 meters and for jets, it's 50 meters in order for below radar to activate. Yeah. However, like I said, you'll only be immune to certain lock-ons. This selection does not include the Stinger and Eagler infantry weapons. As we can see here, I can still lock onto the attack heli and land a hit. There's been a lot of debate on the CTE subreddit if Below Radar should also deny infantry players wielding these lock-on weapons. If you feel strongly for or against this and you're able to download the CTA client, voice your opinion in the relevant threads on the CTA subreddit. But moving over to the mobile AA tank, passive radar and active radar missiles will not be able to lock onto air vehicles if below radar is active. In this test here, I'm using the passive radar missiles and as you can see, I can't get a lock onto the attack heli, but once he gains some altitude going over the below radar coverage, I can then lock onto him. But as you'll soon see, as he returns closer to the ground, I completely lose a lock on function. However, you can still dumb fire these missiles and lock onto your target once he flies out of the below radar zone like you can see here. They can easily make a sharp turn to come back around and hit your target. As for active radar missiles, which like I said before, the lock on function will not work if below radar is activated. However, in my testing, they still seem to lock onto the attack heli here, which I'm assuming is just a bug and will be fixed as it does say in the patch notes active radar missiles are not meant to work while air vehicles have below radar. But moving away from the MAA tank, let's talk about air vehicles. In the patch notes, it also says below radar will block lock-ons from heat seekers, passive radar and active radar from air vehicles. And in this test here, I'm trying out the heat seeker missiles, which as you can see, I'm unable to lock on as the attack heli is below 25 meters. But once he gains some altitude, the lock-on function returns. And just like the MAA tank, passive radar missiles can't lock on while below radar is active, but once the enemy travels up, the lock on function returns. And as for active radar missiles, in this situation, it also seems like they're bugs, as you can see here, they're still locking onto the attack heli, even though he's well within the below radar altitude. But like I said before, I'm pretty sure this is not intended, and hopefully Dysol A fix this in the upcoming patch. I believe there's actually going to be a few CTA updates coming out very soon, so fingers crossed it gets fixed. So let's talk about the Stinger and Igla tweaks. Both of these, like I said before, have been buffed in terms of its damage output. They both can now do 54 damage, which is a massive jump up from how much they can do at the moment in retail BF4. However, on the transport heli, they do 36 damage. Also, the range for the Eagler has been extended to 450 meters, and seeing as their damage has been increased, you only need two missiles to hit the target in order to destroy them, as you can see here, taking down the jet. You might be wondering to yourself, why the hell would they buff the lock-on weapons? Well, it seems like the main reason behind these buffs is due to the countermeasures from air vehicles also receiving quite a lot of buffs, which includes the ECM jammers and IR flares. These countermeasures are supposedly more effective and are on a lower cooldown. However, the infantry player wielding a lock-on weapon still has the same amount of missiles with the same reload speed, but now with a much, much harder hitting missile that I imagine can still easily take out air vehicles, even with all the countermeasure enhancements. I'm not trying to be overly negative about the situation, and yes, these changes are new and they still need time to be playtested to see if it all balances out. However, I really do think the lock-on buffs are a big mistake. I also want to mention both of the lock-on weapons also receive some nerfs. For example, the Stinger missile has decreased acceleration, the lock-on time has been increased, and its turn rate has been lowered. But like I said, its damage has been greatly increased. And it's pretty much the same deal with the Eagle. It also had lowered acceleration and maximum speed, lock-on time has been increased, and its turn rate has been lowered. 
And apart from that, another really interesting change for the Eagler from the patch notes, it says function enabled ignore height lock distance, which at first I was kind of confused what this meant, but apparently it means this weapon will also have unlimited altitude locking. However, when I tested this out in game, it doesn't seem to function, but I imagine the Eagler will have unlimited vertical lock on distance. And staying on topic with the lock-on weapons, you no longer can use any of the lock-on weapons while seated in the passenger seat in the scout and transport heli, which obviously is to stop the Flying Fortress scout heli with two engineers equipped with repairs and stingers. Also, the HMV-2 battle pickup, you know that thing that one hits air vehicles and requires a lock-on after your target uses countermeasures? While its damage has been cut in half, you'll need both shots in order to take down an air vehicle. And finally, the disable effect from mobility hits has been toned down in a pretty big way, to the point it seems like it barely even affects your air vehicle. Just to demonstrate, I'm in the attack heli and I'll get hit with a straw missile that does 74 damage. However, as you can see, the mobility hit barely even makes a difference, I can still control the attack heli without any real problems. And speaking of the straw, once again it's received a nerf to the point you may seriously consider not using it again. Its damage has been reduced by quite a lot. To give you guys some examples here on a tank, it does around 17 damage at the front. In retail BF4 it does 22, hit in the sides does 29, and in retail it does 34. And at the back it will do 44 damage instead of 52 in retail BF4, which means it's no longer a 2 hit kill if you manage to get 2 hits at the back of the tank. Also another huge drawback is the straw no longer one hits the attack and scout heli. In retail BF4 you can one shot these vehicles but in CTA the damage has been dropped to 74 which really does suck. And it does 49 damage to a transport heli which means you'll need 3 straw missiles to take it down. But like I said at the start of the video it's not all that bad for the straw, it's turning capabilities and it's speed has been increased. Also it's range has been increased to 500 meters but for a weapon that does take a certain degree of skill to use I really hate to see it get a nerf. It seems like the main reason behind this change was the attack and scout heli pilots have no warning on a potential one hit kill attack. However that seems fair to me as like I said the straw needs a certain amount of skill to use to guide it to your target. And I'm sure plenty of air pilots out there see that as a respectable way to die instead of being hit by endless lock-on spam. Which of these changes go into the fall patch, I can pretty much guarantee lock-on spam is going to be way, way worse than it currently is. But like I said, I just hope Dysolay makes some final tweaks before they release it to the retail client. But anyway guys, that's it for today's video. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. If you have any suggestions to make, make sure to leave it on the CTA subreddit or just leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.